tired of searching hours online to find the best way to hinge doors, this is the video for you. Stay tuned and all your questions will be answered. Hello YouTubians and fellow hobbyists, welcome to this tutorial. Well, giving your model movable parts is not just a gimmick, but it gives you the chance to show all the pretty and, and gorgeous details that you put in, for example, in the interior. I've been a lot of movable parts on my cars the last couple of years, and when it comes to hinging, you actually can put it down in four major steps. Step number one, cutting out the parts. Step number two, custom build the door frames. Step number three, building the hinges. And step number four, building the closing mechanism. The majority of car kits do not include as separated doors or trunk lids. Therefore, you have to cut them out. There are several ways to do this job. You can use a razor saw, a fret saw or an old school method, just a piece of yarn, which will after breaking a couple times also do the job. My favorite way is just to use the back of a number 11 hobby knife. First with almost no pressure following the panel lines. This is important for the case you leave in the panel line. That scratch will be not so deep then. Also be very accurate with the angle of the knife. It always should be a 90 degrees to the surface of the door. After a while the groove will be more pronounced and you can increase the pressure. Continue this until you finally break through and the part can be removed. Now leaving the groove is a common thing and no reason to panic. It is easy to fix. All you have to do is take a drop of super glue and fill up the scratch. After the glue is dry, you can sand it down and the scratch will disappear completely. Alright, you did cut out the doors and now you will figure that where in a one-to-one -one scale the door frame pillars and door panels are, you got a bunch of nothing. Let's talk about first the door panels. You have to cut them out from the kit. If you glue them now on the door, there will be a gap between the rest of the interior and the new position of the door panel. You have to measure the distance between the inside of the door plus panel and the interior top. Cut out styrene strips in the right size and glue them in place. Now on the body side you need to close the gaps as well. This can be done by making painter tape stencils which will be transferred to the styrene or you can close the gaps by simply using some form of putty. That by the way would also work with the door panels. Make sure that you have a lip on the door frame as a stopping point for the door. If you look at reference pictures you will see that the door has some sort of frame as well. Now how much detail you like to put in your model that's up to you. For me that's usually a point where I stop. The hood and the trunk lid need usually just a frame to prevent the lid not to falling through. What I like to do though is make a nice sandwich out of the trunk lid and hide the hinges in between. If you ever went in the hardware store to the hinge section to fix a broken hinge on your cabinet, you probably had the shock of your life. It's a whole science by itself. There's so many parts that you not even can believe. Now we don't have to get too crazy in the whole physics of it, but a couple things need to be explained. Your pivot point should be even with the fender or any other body part of that matter. Some cars have the pivot point on the side of the body, some at the side of the door. You even can have multiple pivot points, for example with butterfly doors. Depending on the position of the pivot point, you need some space for the part to dive in. The next measure that you have to consider is the distance between the two connecting parts door and body. And finally, the mounting point of the counterpart has to be even with the door. Usually you will mount two hinges to prevent the door from spinning. Be sure the second mount is in 90 degree angle to the floor. Otherwise your doors, 
possibly could touch the street when opened. The skin of a 1 to 1 scale car is mostly made out of a 0.7 mm thick metal sheet. That's why a normal sized car can open the door without sliding her back and forward by having just a 4 mm door gap. If you calculate the thickness of our styrene car in a 124 scale to a 1 to 1 scale, you would have a 25 mm thick door and fender skin. This can lead to problems when you try open the door. Now you could sand the fender down to get more play and install a replica of the original door hinge. The most used solution to that problem is though a sliding hinge, which allows to adjust the hinge while you open the door. The material that we need is basically a wire and some tube with an inner diameter of the wire. For the wire you can use paper clips or any wire you can find in your hardware store. Just be aware, the stiffer the wire is, the stronger the hinge will be. But if you for some reason have to do some micro adjustments later on, you'll be better off with some softer material. When it comes to the tube, you can use styrene, brass or even rubber. Me personally, I make my own channel out of styrene strips, which have some advantage, especially for trunk lids and hoods, but more to that later. But now, how to bend actually the wire. The first two pins marking the length of the pivot point. The second two pins marking how deep the part dives in. The third two bands marking the distance between the door and the body. And finally the last band marking the second mounting point. Of course there's more than one way to skin a cat and your creativity is only the limit. The final step now is make sure your doors and lids stay closed. For this task it's very helpful to install micro magnets. The position of these magnets is very crucial. If you mount them in a 90 degree angle to the body, then the magnet will pull the door on one side and the door gap will be asymmetric. Try to mount the magnets in line with the body. This way the door stays in center when they closed. Now, while you need to make sure the doors stay closed, it's the other way around with hood and trunk lid. The gravity does usually that job for you, but you might want to display the model with open hood or trunk lid. There is a solution for that issue. If you use brass tubing, give the tube a just a bit of a squeeze with a pair of pliers and the friction will keep the door or lid open. If you use the strips and channel the hinges, like I mentioned earlier, you can use some shrinking tube or foam before you close them completely and you will also have the friction to keep them open, where you still be able to close them as well. If you not have enough friction, simply use a piece of paper between the styrene and the shrinking tube until you have enough friction. Now I know it's bold enough to say this is the ultimate guide to do door hinges and uh, learn every day new stuff and uh, try to improve my skills. That's been said though, if you follow those four steps, you will be rewarded with some beautiful movable doors. And all the work that you put in your interior will be seen for years. And as last words, I built uh, movable doors on this channel now for five years. And some things had changed, you know, something I did different five years ago than I did now. Please have that in your mind when you watch other videos on my channel. That's been said, go out and hinge some doors, have fun with all the projects. See you next time. Bye bye.